boom, 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 boom. Oh, we got a crash land in here of a very old plane. This is a Barclay uh, U.S. Army plane. There aren't really very many markings. Uh, I've dated these to the mid-30s, which makes it, how old? About, is that 85 years old? If I'm counting right. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a cool, cool, cool old plane. Uh, very heavy. I think it's mostly lead. Uh, it's missing a lot of parts, both tail pieces. That's going to be a interesting one to fix. Propeller, that shouldn't be too difficult. And wheels, well, I'm going to fabricate those parts in addition to repainting it. I'm not sure if this is the original paint job. It looks pretty sloppy, if it is. But uh, I don't know how well these were made back then. I've been having trouble finding um, pictures of them in mint condition. Um, got a few casting issues. This is definitely not a high-quality toy when it came out. Uh, but it's definitely a cool one. Definitely a cool one. So uh, the first step is going to be to get this in the stripper tank, get this paint off, and then we'll be able to see if there's any cracks or any problems with this body. And uh, while that's in the stripper tank, I'll start uh, fabricating some parts. <laughs> To make the parts, I'm going to use a 3D printer, so I need to measure. So I've got my caplers here, and I'll measure all the, the spots. It's kind of hard to do this in front of a camera, so I'm going to do this off camera. But I'll measure all the pieces. I have another one of these planes that's in slightly better condition, that has both tail pieces. Uh, has one tail piece, so I'll be able to at least see how they're shaped. Um, so I'll be at least... Get close. I won't be exactly, I'm sure. Um, so there's going to be a lot of cool 3D printed parts with this. Uh, another interesting thing, if I can... I don't know if this will show. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to zoom in. Hold on one second. Okay, take a look at how thick this paint was on it. And uh, I get a lot of criticism for on my old things like this, painting them with too thick of a paint. But really, if you see the mint condition ones, or if you take apart ones like this, you'll see that they were painted with very thick paint, and that's what covered up all the problems with this casting. I wager that as soon as we get this paint off, we're going to see all sorts of problems that you can't tell are underneath here. So let's get it in the stripper tank, and we'll find out. I never know how much to show of the building of the 3D parts. I'm using Tinkercad. It's a free program anybody can sign up for online. Really easy to use. It's fun, even if you don't have a 3D printer. These are a lot of fun to play around with, these 3D objects. Basically, I'm just using some uh, standard shapes and adjusting them and manipulating them and combining them to make the pieces that I want. The first few times you do this, it takes forever and super frustrating. But after you learn to do it, it goes really fast, and it really opens up your eyes to all the different possibilities of things you can make. Now this part might be super extra boring. This is how I set it up in my 3D printer. I uh, slice it, which is where the uh, computer goes through and creates a bunch of different layers, which is how all 3D printers make their objects. Have to create the supports and change a bunch of different settings. It's one of those things that's really complex the first time, but after you do it once, it's crazy easy. Okay, here it is with the paint off. So you can see it's a very, very, very rough casting. Um, it's extremely heavy, most likely has a high lead count, and from what I've read about the uh, Barclays, they do. Now, I'm going to clean up some of these windows. As you know from watching my videos, I really don't mind casting lines, but those just look ugly. And it really does not change the appearance other than making it look nice. So I'm just going to open up those windows like they're supposed to be. We have a lot of little things that need to be done to this airplane. Oh, it's missing a missing a post there. Hmm. Let's see if I can fix that. So while we are waiting for the parts to print, it takes about an hour for the parts to print. Got a little bit of work to do. I need to pull out this. It's just a nail. So you can see it's just a nail that goes through there for the propeller. Let's see if I can Pull it out this way. There we go. I'm going to need to file these tails flat 
so that my uh, 3D printed parts will have a good good place to glue onto. A rough edge is not good at all for gluing. This should be very easy. This is the softest metal I think I've ever worked with. This axle is just a nail that's been crimped on one end. So I'm just going to file this down to pull it out. And then I'll just recrimp it or bend it over. I'll figure out some way to keep the tires on. And there we go. So now we're ready to add our new parts on and then uh, paint it. So we're well on our way. It's looking good, looking good. So the plane was missing the, this post on this side. So I took a little bit of 3D printer filament and uh, cut it and sanded it down to smaller than even the size of the filament and uh, glued it in there. It's still, the glue's still drying a little bit, but it was, I didn't do it on camera because it was so small. I mean, look at the size of my finger and my tweezers. It was even hard to grab with my tweezers. It was so small. So that's going to help out a lot. I'll sand this down, and it will, once we get it primed in paint, you'll barely be able to tell. And probably if I hadn't shown you, you wouldn't be able to tell that it was even there. So as you can see on this close-up, this is a rough, rough, rough casting. Probably the roughest I've ever worked with. And that is why back then they used such... Uh, thick paint, because it covered up a lot of these imperfections. Also, uh, because it's got so soft, it's so much lead in here, it's caused a lot of dings. I've gone over this with sandpaper to try and get as many dings as I can out of it. Surprising it's as good a shape as it is. And so here's the 3D printed parts I've got. I've got the tail pieces. I've got two of those. got the wheels. got two of those. And I've got the propeller. And uh, I couldn't measure this exactly, but I think we're pretty close here into what it needs to be. So I'm going to glue these on off camera because I can't even see my hands right now because the camera's in the way. And I need to be able to do this just perfectly because they've got to be, they got to be even. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm sure that they're not completely accurate and perfect. I did use a little bit of putty here because uh, the fitment wasn't perfect. But after the putty, I think it's going to look just fine. The only issue I see with it is that they're a little bit thicker than I'd like. But that's about as thin as I could get them. And still be, you know, rigid. So, anyway, uh, we need to talk about the paint job on this guy. And uh, that's going to be a little weird. The original paint job was... Um, red, white, and blue, and I thought that it was like a kid's paint job because it was done so poorly, but um, in reality, that was from the factory. Um, I can't bring myself to make it look that poor, so um, I think I'm going to go with a straight red because I found several that were red, around red, orange, green. I found all those colors, and uh, red's my favorite color, so I think we're going to make them all red. So first, I'm going to give them a coat of primer. And then we will paint him red, and then we'll be well on our way to being done. The tail's a little, I'm noticing in the camera here, it looks like it's a little off-center. That's because the fuselage is slightly bent, but I bet I can fix that. There we go, that's much better. Very even now. Amazing what, what a teeny little, little tweak with a screwdriver can make it work. All I did was I stuck my screwdriver up in there and just bent it up a little bit. This is so soft. It's a, it's it's amazing that it's in, in uh, as square and not as bent any more than it is. Okay, let's get some paint on this guy. I must say, considering that this thing is 85 years old, about, I'm very pleased with how it's looking. So let's get these wheels on. I'm going to use the same axle and slip it on like this. There we go. Put that wheel on. And carefully, with trying to not damage the paint by scratching it, I'm going to re crimp this. Ugh. Probably have to do this off camera because this is going to take a little bit of, a little bit of 
strength here. So that's what I'm going to do. And that was harder than I was expecting, but it looks pretty good now. It rolls. And all we have left is the propeller. And... Ooh, I was hoping to be able to just push it in with my finger, but that is not happening. Ah, oh, man, this is tough. And again, this metal is so soft, I don't want to damage it. If I pound on anything, it could totally bend any of this other stuff. So I'm just going to gently work this in, going like this, and pushing it in. Oh, that, that about got it, about got it, about got it. Okay. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Okay. So that is going to finish up our build. Like I said before, I purposely used the thick paint because that's what I had before. I think it looks great. It looks very as close to original as I could get using homemade parts. Uh, much, much, much better. I love these old, old vehicles. So um, I hope you enjoyed this project. It took a lot more work than I was expecting. But uh, that's how the way it goes. I've never worked on something that uh, the metal was this uh, soft. I could literally scratch it with my fingernail. That's how soft this metal was. I think it was probably more than 50% lead. But um, anyway, I enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. If you remember, this is the before, and now we have the after. And I appreciate you watching this far through my video, and I uh, hope to see you in my next one. Goodbye. Vroom, 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 vroom.